Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward. And since we've kind of been messing with the claymation stop motion type of uh, type of gig, let's uh, let's go a little bit further with that and kind of pay an homage to sort of who I like to think of as the king of claymation and stop motion, well the modern king anyways, Tim Burton. So let's uh, let's see if we can't come up with like a, a Tim Burton style type of Maybe just not a whole character, of course, but uh, maybe just just uh, just a head, just to kind of give it that feel. So, uh, what I want to do is go ahead and get rid of the old default cube, and I'm going to Shift A, add a icosphere. I've been playing with those a little bit more recently here than the UV spheres, namely because uh, when you add the smooth shading and the subdivision surface. It doesn't add the, the little bit of you know deformation there at the top and bottom where all those poles come into one single point. So, um, anyways, let's go into top view and let's go to edit mode and let's rotate this around until we can get it lined up with a nice line down the center. I see a line right here, so let's go ahead and just rotate that around until I can get it lined up just right. There, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and select all these. Um, also want to make sure we turn off the limit selection to visible. Let's go back to top view. Select those again. And we'll go ahead and delete the vertices there. And of course add the old mirror modifier. It's a best friend when we're modeling something that has symmetry to it. And I'll also want to turn on the, the clipping. There it is. Okay, so let's, we're a little offset here in the center there, so we'll just grab everything and kind of move it towards each other so they glue together, and then we have some that were already across the line, so let's go ahead and move it back. Now everything's now glued to to each other. Okay, so the, the, the model I want to make is kind of a little cartoonish skull that you might have seen on something like the Corpse Bride or something like that, so let's just give it a nice stylized feel. Right now I'm just pulling out this triangle here to be the cheekbone area and now I want to grab these five guys here and since this one's connected to the center I need to go ahead and turn off that clipping and we're going to extrude bring that down and maybe scale it down some maybe bring it back out just a little bit and scale it up some and then we'll extrude again bring it down we can go ahead and turn that clipping back on okay and let's go ahead and scale it down a little bit more and then maybe extrude one more time scale that down just kind of round it out let's select all of these guys in here and we'll go W smooth and kind of change our iterations right there and let's uh, let's add another loop right here on the edge so we can get a nice sharp cut there and you know what let's go over here to our subsurf there and increase our subdivisions up to to the render setting, which would be 2. Okay, so you might be able to see this starting to take shape already. Uh, we have our eye sockets here and a little bit of a cheekbone. We'll need to work on that a little bit more. But uh, already starting to take shape. Uh, I want to add another ring right behind this one, right there, another loop. And let's go ahead and scale that up so we kind of have a nice, you know, a nice lip there on our eye socket. Reason being, I'm going to put a different, I'm going to put a different texture in here, and I want it to have a nice, clean separation that's not visible, really. So, okay, so now let's uh, let's grab these guys here that we have, uh, actually not that one, but these guys that we originally pulled out as the cheekbones. Go ahead and extrude those out, and then we'll W smooth. Go ahead and smooth those up the iterations a little bit more. And now I want to grab this area here. I'm going to come down. This is going to be our start of our teeth area. Let's go and scroll that. Uh, excuse me. Roll that around and scale it on the y axis there. And maybe we just grab this point right here and pull it down. And let's grab these, pull these over a little bit. And tell you what, let's grab both of these now. And you know one trick you can do, uh, this is more or less a square now, but it's separated into triangles. 
You can just grab both of those and just hit F and it'll automatically turn it into a four-sided polygon. And now we don't really need this triangle here either. So let's grab those and hit Alt M and we can merge them at the center. You can see that uh, typically you want to have the, f the fewer triangles the better as far as uh, meshes that you're going to be deforming into animations. Now in its defense the icosphere is made up of only triangles. Uh, there might be some other settings but I haven't really played with it too much but uh, since this is going to be a skull head we don't, we're probably not going to be messing with the the, the topology of it too much as we're animating. We might mess with the eye sockets a little bit, you know, for different expressions, but either way. Um, let's go ahead and come down here. Let's extrude these guys out one more time. Down a little bit further like that. Okay. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. And let's go to our front view and actually start tapering this down. And move to our side view and thin it up some. Okay. Now I want to give him some some teeth. Not really, you know, the, the typical, you know, 32 human teeth or whatever. This is a cartoon stylized skull, so he's just going to have a few. Um, want to turn off my clipping again right there because we're going to bring this guy down as a tooth. About like so. And then we're going to put another one right there. It's going to just have a few teeth, just four teeth there. But like I said, it's a stylized cartoon style, so I think it'll work. I'm going to go ahead and move them up a little bit. They seem a little too low. Maybe bring, grab our vertex select and bring, bring that guy up. And let's tell you what, let's bring those forward some. Okay. Need to turn that clipping back on, huh? There we go. I'll glue that back together. Okay. So you can see it's really starting to get that Tim Burton feel about it, I think, anyways. Let's uh, give these teeth a little bit more topology here. Just put a loop around them. Remember, Control R is the, the add a loop. And we'll just, just let these by themselves scale them down. So it's a little more rounded, like so. Okay, and I guess we should give him a tiny little nasal cavity. So we'll just grab this and just go ahead and extrude it. Scale it way down. Scale it on the x-axis and go ahead and bring it out some. And let's rotate it to where it's not bringing this out any. Okay. Now we need to extrude one more time, scale it down, and then extrude one more time and then drag it inside. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, I think. Um, I would like to add a loop right here. Actually, that's not what I had in mind. Hmm. I guess we can grab... I guess icospheres aren't the best for... <laughs> for modeling with, but we'll make it work. Let's grab all these. W smooth, get a nice smooth edge. There we go. And let me grab these right here. That'll work. And then we'll just W subdivide them once. So we have a little bit more elbow room to smooth for one, the eye socket out, <clears throat> and two, to bring some more smoothness to the cheekbone area here. And you know what? Let's add a loop in here just so we can get a nice, clean cut there on the edge. Okay, so we got a decent looking Tim Burton style skull. Um, let me make the face of it a little bigger relative to the head. Let's rotate that around. Let's just scale it up. Let's go to our front view make sure we're not 
we're overlapping our middle line here with our teeth and we don't want them to glue together there so let's go ahead and turn off clipping and then drag it apart some and let's grab the edge of our tooth and drag it over there we go and let's turn clipping back on grab this whole center loop there and just drag it towards itself and then back okay now we need to clean up clean it up just a little bit and drag this out some okay now let's see I think if we put the mirror first we'll smooth up some of those harsh edges there where it meets and the subsurf can come after okay just a few more tweaks and then we'll start putting on a nice uh, little material there we go and one more little smooth area here let's just add a hmm, not quite Let's put our, our loop right there. There we go. That, that should help out a little bit. Kind of smooth up this strange def deformation, strange deform deformed area there. And let's move our cheekbone out some. Okay. Now, um, since he's going to be a stylized skull, maybe we need to give him some eyeballs. But I don't want to fill up the whole eye socket. I just want to put a little dot in there, just kind of like a, a, a rattle of some sort that has strangely became become his eyeball. Let's go into edit mode, and let's put our 3D cursor over here, and we'll go shift A, and let's go ahead and add another UV sphere. No, nope, not UV, pardon me. Icosphere, there we go. And we'll scale it down quite a bit. And let's move it over, scale it down even more, and let's move it over to where it's just hovering in space in its eye socket there. Maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. So there's that. Now we'll work on a nice, uh, a nice texture map. Or not necessarily a texture map, but a procedural texture. So we'll go to our material set, uh, settings and just add a new one. And let's name this Bone. And we'll go to our Textures tab, add a new one. Clouds will be fine. Except let's go to, uh, let's try Voronoi F2, F1. And then we'll go ahead and collapse that. Turn on our colors, turn on Ramp. And select the, actually the black one's already selected. So let's just click in here. We want to set the uh, Alpha all the way up. And we don't want black anymore, just a nice tan color will work like so and then let's actually go back to our cloud settings and increase the size up maybe not all the way to two but uh, about 1.25 increase the depth and let's turn on both here and we can kind of see it in our viewport kind of a nice old aged bone settings I would assume I've never really seen an old bone in real life um, so let's set our specular level down. It's not necessarily going to look like clay, but definitely something that would be used in a stop motion setting. And we'll increase the hardness as well. And you know what? Let's go ahead and go back to our texture. Let's go ahead and set this not only as the color influence, but also the normal. So we can increase that just a little. You kind of see it taking effect there. Okay, so now let's set up our scene real quick. Let's just rotate. Actually, let's rotate the camera around the skull rather than the skull for the camera. I want to set my 3D cursor right there on the middle of the skull so I can rotate my camera around it. So we'll go uh, cursor to selected. There we go. And we'll hit period on our keyboard. So now we're rotating around the 3D cursor. I'm going to grab my camera and just hit R a couple of times. And I'll just drag it over get a nice three three quarter view basically and then we can zoom in okay now let's set our light up a little bit and over here you know what I'm just gonna leave it the standard light 
go back to our camera and let's go to our world settings here and turn on ambient occlusion but let's knock it way down to say uh, point uh, let's do point three five Let's go ahead and change our background color, the horizon color. Let's make that black. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and save this. It's still my test folder. Name it uh, Skull Head. Save as. All right. Now let's give it a render. And you can see it's got a decent looking bone texture on there. Might need to increase the sheen, the sh specular level to it. Let's do that real quick. Let's make it a little bit more shiny. One more time. I guess that'll work okay. Uh, now to get that real nice Tim Burton feel, like I said, let's uh, turn those sockets black and inside the nose we'll make that black also. So, let's uh, go over here to our materials, create a new one, and that just copies the original and just click the number beside it to say, hey, we want this one to be its own material and let's name this one black and now we'll go to the uh, the texture settings scroll up to here and let's just go ahead and get rid of that one and we'll make a new one and let's name let's make this one a blend go down to our color map there turn on ramp and let's click on the white area here and just hit delete and then click on the black alpha there and just make it all the way one and we'll go back to the materials, set the spe intensity of the specular all the way down to zero. Just want this to be, actually, you know, not all the way. Let's give it just a tiny little bit of sheen, about like that, and then set the hardness way down as well. Okay, now we need to apply this second material here on the model to part of the model. So we have to go into edit mode, and let's select all of these guys in here, and we will say assign and it's going to assign that to that color. Now if you want to have a visual represent, representation here in your preview window, you can go ahead and change the diffuse color to black if you wanted to. Uh, that blend blend file, um, the blend color ramp is going to take care of that for us in the render, but if you want to see it here in the preview also, you can just go in here and change that like that. Let's go ahead and make the inside of the nasal cavity there also black. There we go. Go ahead and assign that as well. And that for Texas. Okay. So there we go. Let's go ahead and render this out. See, it's kind of a kind of something you might see in a Tim Burton movie. But uh, you can use this style for, you know, any character. It doesn't have to be a skull. But anyways, that's just a uh, Kind of uh, Halloween's coming up. Might be kind of cool in honor of Halloween and Tim Burton. Kind of a nice time of the year to have that kooky, creepy, black and white feel. You know. Anyways, that's all for this little guy. And um, I guess I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.